If you could only grow 10 vegetables, what would they be? I'm Liz Zorab and this is By The Farm. I was asked this at the weekend and I thought it was such a good question uh, that I'd answer it in a video and it will be interesting to see if you agree with my answers. These are in no particular order of preference and they all have a reason for being on my list. Number one, Greek Gigantes beans. This is a Greek Gigantes, which is a, uh, it's like a runner bean and therefore can be grown as a perennial bean in many areas. The beans are sown during May and the plants grow vigorously. But you don't uh, eat the actual green bean pod. You wait until they've got really fat. <laughs> Here's one <laughs> from earlier. And the bean uh, on the inside is what you eat. So you eat these really big, beautiful uh, white beans. They're very creamy, they're potatoy, uh, they're great in soups and stews. Uh, they're also just great uh, cooked with just a little bit of butter, maybe even some garlic on them. And they've become a, a staple of our winter diet. Rather than pulling the plants out of the ground, I cut them off four to six inches above soil level and I mulch them with a bit of straw or better still, some homemade compost and leave them for the winter. And the next year, there's a very real chance that they will grow back. Now, of course, you can sow fresh seeds every year, but I like to see if they will regrow because they don't just send up one shoot, they'll send up multiple shoots, giving you an even better harvest the next year. I preserve Greek Gigantes beans in two ways. Uh, I dry some of them and store them in an airtight container and then others I boil for 10 minutes and then drain them, put them under cold water very quickly to cool them down and then I freeze them in two people portions so they're very easy to take out the freezer and use during the rest of the year. If you dry the beans the best way to use them is to soak them uh, in cold water overnight and then make sure that you boil them for at least 10 minutes before you add them to a dish. I don't tend to store potatoes uh, through the winter. We like to eat them uh, when they're quite fresh. And so to find that nice filling, carby, starchy uh, food during the winter, I use other things and Greek Gigantes beans is one of those. The number two is red cabbage. I've got to say growing brassicas is my favorite thing to grow. It's not necessarily my favorite thing to eat, but I do like to grow them. I like the way when you've sown the seeds, the plants all come up in a really even size and then you plant them out with a lot of TLC and they just grow away into these enormous plants. So red cabbage uh, we use uh, to make coleslaw in the summer and then I shred it and braise it uh, with lots of apple and sultanas and things like cinnamon and ginger to provide a really warming uh, vegetable during the winter. So I braise it, I let it cool, I put it into the freezer in two people portions. You'll find a theme going on here. Cabbages will also store for quite a long time in a cool place. You can just cut them from their stems, take off the very outer leaves and then store uh, the main part in a netting sack uh, in somewhere hung up in somewhere like a shed where it can't be uh, reached by vermin and also uh, the air can flow around it. Number three. It's probably my favourite root vegetable, and that's parsnips. Now, I know a lot of people have difficulty growing parsnips, or they say they're quite hard to germinate. There are a couple of ways that you can ensure germination. One is to wait until the weather is a little warmer, so end of April, maybe even the middle of May before you sow the seeds. And the other way is to sow the seeds on some damp tissue in your kitchen on the windowsill. And once they've germinated and you can see the first signs of growth, then you can sow those out into your garden where they're going to grow. I don't grow them in modules because parsnips, like most root vegetables, don't transplant very well. They need to just be where they're going to grow to allow that root to go straight down and get a nice straight root on your veg. In our temperate climate here in the UK, you can store parsnips in the ground, just harvesting them when you need them. Uh, parsnips are much better uh, if you leave them till after they've had the first frost because all starches in those roots uh, the the action of the frost turns those into sugars and so your parsnip then becomes a very sweet parsnip and that's what I really like and a quick word of caution the leaves of parsnips can be quite irritating to the skin so make sure that you wear gloves when you're handling parsnip leaves 
Number four is a blue Hubbard squash. There are so many squashes to grow. There are so many delightful tastes and shapes and sizes. When Mr. J and I were talking about this list, we thought maybe it would be a butternut squash, but I like to say it's a blue Hubbard squash just as well. Uh, the blue Hubbard has absolutely loved it here. There's obviously been enough moisture, lots of nutrients. It produced masses, a very lush growth, but it's also uh, produced two pretty good sized squashes. So I only get two, maybe three fruits per, uh, per plant, but they're so big, I probably only need half a dozen fruits to see us right through the winter. While these are nearly ripe, nearly ready to harvest, uh, not quite ready yet. And the easy way to tell is there is a section of stem that goes from the leafy vine to the fruit and that will uh, turn brown. And when that's brown, uh, these are very definitely ready to harvest and can be cured, which means leaving them in a uh, dry, coolish place. We'll actually leave them on the kitchen table or possibly in the barn just for a couple of weeks to allow the skin to go really dry and that cures it and preserves the flesh on the inside and then we'll be able to keep those until we want to use them anything up to nine months or maybe even a year. To harvest squash, uh, you cut the vine um, leaving a little bit of vine on each side of the stalk that gives a chance for that vine to shrink and die back and that will help to minimise the risk of damage to your squash. Number five is the second root vegetable and it's carrots. I absolutely love carrots and they're one of the mainstays of our cooking. Hands along here uh, and we've got onions uh, each side uh, of quite a thick row of carrots here. I don't know what the carrots uh, are doing in terms of size. Fingers crossed that they'll be a nice crop for us. So I use them in salads for creating coleslaw. Carrot, orange and poppy seed salad is one of my favourites. And then we also use them uh, for roasting and for boiled. And I use them um, mashed and combined with other veg. I use them in soups. I, I use carrots a lot, so carrots would definitely need to be in there. Carrots are doing okay. Um, it's been... <laughs> Uh, a pretty good year for the carrots. Um, I'm very happy. Uh, this is probably the largest carrot I've lifted so far. Uh, I think this will be um, going with my lunch today. <laughs> I don't really um, like carrots when they've got this big. I like them uh, younger and more tender, but I'm um, happy with that. I sow my carrots not thinly, I was going to say quite thickly, but that's not the right phrase, but I don't sow them very thinly and also I don't thin my carrots out. So they do grow uh, four, five and six and together in a row, but that's okay. I'm not looking for enormous carrots or something that you could take to a village show. I'm just looking for carrots for the kitchen. Uh, just on a note, um, I don't usually lift carrots in the morning because uh, obviously the smell of carrots is then in the air for the whole day uh, for carrot root fly to come along and smell it and find the carrots uh, so i try and lift those either late afternoon or even better early evening there are several varieties i like things like chantenay red core which is quite a short carrot uh, a nant which is quite early in the year uh, and also uh, Autumn King, which is just uh, one of those wonderful mainstays. They grow quite long and fat, and they're the, they're the ones that you would normally see uh, sitting on the shelves in the supermarket. Carrots are another veg that you can store in the ground if you want to use them, or you can lift them and store them in a box of damp sand or compost. And number six is garlic. We eat an awful lot of garlic, not just crushed uh, into meals to give them a flavour, but whenever I've got uh, the oven on and I'm roasting vegetables or roasting a piece of meat, I will throw in a whole bulb of garlic. So not just a clove, a whole bulb of garlic. I just break it up and put it in there because I absolutely love the taste of roasted garlic. There are two main types of garlic, hard neck and soft neck and a soft neck garlic will store for longer than a hard neck garlic. In this house, we don't really mind which type of garlic we're growing. We kind of like them all. Number seven is tomatoes. So a few years ago, uh, I grew some tomatoes in the greenhouse and they were okay. They were, they were all right, but they got nibbled uh, by something. And then the second year, even though I cleaned out the greenhouse, um, 
grew them again and they got nibbled again and that was the tomato hornworm not the most attractive uh, caterpillar to look at they also got hit by blight so I gathered in uh, all the tomatoes I could but they had quite a bitter taste to them and it it really put me off tomatoes but I was persuaded uh, just to grow maybe one or two plants which I did and I grew them in a hanging basket and I'm really glad I did they were tiny little cherry tomatoes it just gave me that little fresh taste and got me through a year of not wanting to grow them since then yes I have been growing tomatoes <laughs> like mad I didn't really realize at the time I probably didn't appreciate how much I was going to enjoy them so I've got six or maybe it's seven varieties on the go. They're growing on the windowsills in the house because it's not warm enough yet to plant them into the polytunnel. To preserve tomatoes, I freeze a lot of them. So all the cherry tomatoes get frozen whole and anything bigger than about an inch, I cut in half and I lay them out on trays, put trays into the freezer. Uh, once those are frozen, I then move those into bags. So I then just have large bags of tomatoes. I can just go to the freezer grab a handful of tomatoes whenever I want to use them in my cooking and they're there ready to use. And the other way I preserve them uh, is through canning or bottling. I remember as a small child my dad bottling tomatoes and I can always remember thinking <laughs> it was a lot of work just to preserve a few tomatoes. By the time I was growing my own I understood exactly why he did it. There's nothing nicer than knowing I grew this. Number eight is sweet corn. I absolutely love sweet corn. Mr J's not all that keen on it, but he will tolerate it in cooking. For the last few years, I've been growing a variety called Special Swiss. And in 2020, I saved masses of the sweet corn to use as seeds. Well, I didn't sow them last year because we were in the process of moving. So this year, I'll be sowing a whole load of that and to grow to replenish our stocks. So I preserve sweet corn again by either freezing or by pressure canning. When I'm canning the sweet corn, I blanch it first and then I cut all the kernels off the cob and just preserve those. For freezing, I do the same thing, but I also freeze some as corn on the cob. Number nine is shallots. I grow a variety which is a like a banana one. It's a, a long, thin, quite pink, uh, and it's called I think it's called Zabruni or Zabrun. I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, and I think possibly there's one called Longal that's the same thing. I use them in cooking. I like them in salads. They're a little bit milder than onion. But the other thing I like to do with them uh, is cut the top and the bottom off, uh, take the skins off them and roast them whole. They're absolutely delicious. Before I tell you about the last one, I was going to include a herb garden. I was going to cheat and say number 10 is my herb garden. And Mr J said, come on, herbs aren't vegetables. Uh, so let me know what you think. Are herbs vegetables? Should I have included them in my vegetable countdown? Uh, I'm going to say no because I think they're the things that uh, add flavour and a touch of something different to every meal. Uh, so my number 10 is salad leaves and different ones can be grown right throughout the year. I like them as a salad but also I like them to be able to add a bit of crunch to my plate at other times of year and also you can wilt them in a pan with a bit of garlic and butter and they make a wonderful warmed vegetable. So now it's over to you. Which vegetables would you grow if you could only grow 10 veg? Please leave your selection in the comments. And if you are a content creator, please make a video and let me know which vegetables you'd grow if you could only grow 10 veg.